Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a South Korean comedy film called Slow Video. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts in a CCTV control center where two women are talking about their new young coworker. He is wearing sunglasses indoors, which the women think is weird. Suddenly, they detect two robbers on the run. Their boss is notified and they quickly call the police. Everyone in the office tracks the robbers through the cameras, and yet, they get lost. When they start losing hope, the new employee shows them a clip of the robbers hiding in an alleyway. Because of his help, they are soon caught by the police. The employee's name is Yo Jang Bu, and he has a rare genetic condition that makes him see everything in slow motion. Using his disorder, he was able to see where the robbers went, even though they were moving at a high speed. When Jang Bu was in class 5, he took part in a relay race with his childhood crush, Bong Su Mi. That was when he first started to see things in slow motion. His parents took him to Dr. Siok, who diagnosed him with dynamic visual acuity, a rare disorder that enables him to visually perceive fine detail in a moving object that ordinary people cannot, as if he's seeing the world in slow motion. To prove that Jang Bu does in fact have the disorder, the doctor throws a baseball at him at high speed, which he catches with ease. Had the test failed, Jang Bu could have sued that doctor's ass. The doctor advises him to wear sunglasses at all times for comfort. After Jang Bu is diagnosed, his father flies to a foreign country to earn money for his treatment. Jang Bu is left at home with his mother and younger sister. He claims that the disorder has been a blessing and a curse at the same time. Although he could watch the wind move women's skirts in slow motion, he was bullied in school for his sunglasses. His only friend then was Su Mi, who he started to fall in love with. But as time passed, Su Mi got severely bullied for being his friend, and so, she left him. Following that, Jang Bu has never had a friend. He wanted to lose his eyesight altogether, so he watched TV all the time. His vision didn't really get worse, but he developed an obsession with K-dramas a fate worse than blindness. He learned all the social skills from the actors in the drama, but never got out of the house to practice them. His father refused to return to Korea, even during the holidays, to continue to save money. But it all went to waste when one day he died because of an accident in the workplace. Following the death, the only man that Jang Bu is close to is Dr. Siok. He advises him to see the world outside of his room and help his family with money. That is why Jang Bu starts to work in the CCTV control center. In a monologue, he claims that he likes to watch people on the screen because it reminds him of dramas. The only difference is that in this drama, everyone is the lead actor. His coworker, Byung Su, talks to their boss about Jang Bu's behavior, claiming that he is very introverted and he doesn't talk to anyone. He promises to take care of the guy because he is a true talent. Byung Su sits beside him at work and tries talking to Jang Bu. However, a shy Jang Bu answers all of Byung Su's questions in his head and doesn't speak to him. While monitoring the cameras, he seems to be counting how many steps people take to reach a certain place. Byung Su thinks it's weird, but doesn't ask any questions. Clearly, Byung Su never watched Sesame Street. In an attempt to socialize with him, Byung Su asks him if he has a girlfriend. This reminds Jang Bu of Su Mi, so he goes to her house the very next day. Su Mi has grown up into a beautiful woman, but with financial issues. Her debt collector nags her to sell the house to pay back her loans. Jang Bu watches her from afar, but is too scared to go talk to her. From that day onwards, he watches her through the CCTV cameras every day and memorizes her daily routine. At night, she drinks soda in front of a coffee shop, so he too does the same. He sees her eyeing an abandoned sofa on the way and drags it in front of the coffee shop the next day. Su Mi notices the sofa, but doesn't think much of it. The following day, she is stuck at a bus stop because of the heavy rainfall. Jang Bu sees this on the monitor and goes to help her with Byung Su. He puts the umbrella over her like in the K-dramas, but Su Mi calls him a creep and walks away. Following that, the two go to Dr. Siok, asking for ways Jang Bu could impress Su Mi. He suggests Jang Bu give her flowers. Su Mi is late for her musical drama audition the next day. She calls the manager and starts singing in the middle of the road as her audition. As she sings a beautiful song, the bystanders watch her in awe. 
Jang Bu also arrives there with a bouquet of flowers. He hands her the flower after the song, but Sumi doesn't appreciate it. She tells him she would prefer a box of ramen and walks away. Sumi is a woman of culture. Jang Bu calls her name and finally introduces himself as her childhood best friend, but she claims that her name is Oh Sumi and not Bong Sumi. It turns out Jang Bu has been following the wrong woman all this time, yet he has started to fall for her deeply. That evening, they accidentally bump into each other and Su Mi makes Jang Bu carry her groceries. Before leaving, Su Mi asks him why he is looking for Bong Su Mi, to which he replies that he used to like her in school. The next day at work, Jang Bu sees Su Mi receive a phone call on the monitor. The person on the other end informs her that she got a role in the musical. She jumps and dances in the streets as Jang Bu watches her on the screen. That night, Su Mi goes to celebrate at a local roadside restaurant. She notices Jang Bu watching her from outside and invites him in. As they talk, she shows him the musical's script and practices her lines. Jang Bu compliments her acting and shows her a talent of his own. Soon, the entire restaurant watches as Jang Bu catches spoons thrown at him. The following day, Jang Bu walks around Su Mi's neighborhood while counting his steps. Byung Su sees him doing this and realizes he is trying to memorize the ways. While returning home, Su Mi finds Jang Bu waiting for her. They walk together, talking about several things. She asks him what his job is and finds out that he works at the CCTV center and can watch people all day. They shop in front of the cafe that Su Mi always stares at. She reveals that she has a crush on the cafe's owner and gushes about him owning a car. A jealous Jang Bu stares at the owner for a long time. He has made up his mind to take her on a ride to impress her. He asks everyone at work if they own a car in hopes of borrowing it. However, none of them happen to own one. While returning home, Sumi is approached by the debt collector. He starts to yell at her and threatens to hit her if she doesn't return the money. Jang Bu and Byung Su arrive there right on time and save her from the man. When Jang Bu returns to work, Su Mi yells thank you to one of the cameras, knowing that he is watching on the other end. At the end of the day, they meet at a park and talk for a long time. Jang Bu asks her what she would do if she owned a car, to which Su Mi says that she would drive to the sea every day. Since he cannot get a car, Jang Bu befriends his local bus driver by traveling with him all day. He had been watching the driver play baseball alone at night through the cameras. At the end of the day, Jang Bu joins him for a game and asks him for a favor. Byung Su, the bus driver, and Jang Bu pick up Su Mi from the bus stop the next day and make their way to Busan to visit the sea. Seeing his efforts to make her happy, Su Mi starts to like Jang Bu. He's a stalker and he manipulates people. What a catch. However, their bus is stopped by the border police who don't allow the local district bus to enter the other district. An angered Su Mi tries to fight the policeman while Byung Su calms her down. Their effort is useless because at the end of the day, they have to return home without reaching the sea. Jang Bu's boss tells them about recent cases of women being abducted around the town and asks them to be on high alert at all times. Just then, Jang Bu notices Su Mi on a monitor, but she disappears right after. He freaks out and rushes to see if she is okay only to see that she was trying to prank him to see if he would come. Su Mi takes off his glasses for the first time and the two finally kiss. Jang Bu takes Su Mi home and she invites him in. However, their plans are ruined when Su Mi notices the debt collectors in her house. They throw her belongings around, threatening her to return the money. Jang Bu tries to run to her but suddenly falls down as his vision goes blurry. After the men leave, Jang Bu and Su Mi sit down to talk. In the pile of stuff that the collectors threw out are drawings that Jang Bu made for Su Mi when they were in school. Su Mi reveals that she lied to him about being a different girl because she didn't want to be compared to her younger self. Jang Bu, who really should have seen this twist coming, keeps quiet the whole time as Su Mi looks at the drawings while smiling. He visits Dr. Siok the next day, informing him that his eyes have gotten blurry it turns out that with time, his disorder has gotten worse, because of which he will be losing his vision very soon. Jang Bu had known that he would eventually go blind one day. That is why he has been counting steps everywhere he goes, so it would be easier for him when he loses his vision entirely. While Jang Bu is troubled by his worsening vision, Su Mi is worried about her debt. 
She sells her house and gathers enough money to pay her creditors back, but now she has nowhere to live. Jang Bu watches her on a screen while she talks to a shopkeeper with a box of her belongings. Suddenly, his coworker notices a car suspiciously circling the same area. She looks closely at its license plate and notices that the car belongs to a kidnapper on the run. She notifies the boss and the police are informed immediately. However, they lose sight of the car and at the same time, Jang Bu loses sight of Su Mi. He freaks out and runs to save her from potential danger. On his way, he loses his vision completely and crashes the bike. Byung Su notices this through the cameras and runs to help him. Su Mi, on the other hand, is approached by a strange man who grabs her arm. But before he can take her away, Jang Bu starts to run towards them. The abductor runs away, but Jang Bu almost crashes into a bus. The police arrive and take Su Mi in for interrogation. Now, Jang Bu is left alone in the streets and is helped by Byung Su. He cries while holding his friend, devastated at losing his vision. Several days have passed since the incident. Su Mi gets busy with her life and doesn't contact Jang Bu. She looks at the CCTV cameras often when she misses him. A few months later, she notices Jang Bu inside her favorite cafe. She happily approaches him and waves her hand, but is shocked when Jang Bu brings out his stick and walks the other way. She follows him around the town and finally reaches an art gallery that is filled with paintings of her that Jang Bu has drawn. In a monologue, Jang Bu says that he has lost his vision, but he still remembers her. The next day, Su Mi again follows him, but this time, he asks her where she wants to go. She realizes that he can sense her, and the movie ends as the two hug. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.